Hello and welcome to Conversations with Dr. Westman. Today we're going to be chatting about visceral fat. We also have a bonus for you and it's Dr. Westman's free 10 things you need to know to lose fat on keto. We'll put a link for you in the description. How are you doing, Eric? Doing great. How are you, Glenn? Very, very good. Thank you. So um, today's topic, visceral fat. So what is visceral fat and how is it different from subcutaneous fat? Yeah, you know, uh, I have to say, I, I don't have a whole lot of people coming to me asking what is visceral fat, but there are a lot, I mean, as, a, as patients come to me, my office, but it's important to understand the difference between visceral fat and other kinds of fat, um, especially as these more unusual sorts of fat syndromes are being talked about more like lymphedema and lipedema, things like that. Um, so visceral fat is basically the, the stereotype, viscera, viscera means um, organ, in, internal organs. So if you, um, you might know the term eviscerate, which you know, is a term of you, you basically, uh, um, gosh, you, you go out, you have wild animal game, you, you hunt, and then you eviscerate, meaning you take out the organs. So that's where viscera comes from. Now you'll probably never forget that term. Viscera means the internal organs and, and visceral fat means the fat that's around those visceral organs or inside the belly. So really the, the easiest way is to think of visceral fat as belly fat. Okay, and um, is, is visceral fat more of a risk, risk factor than subcutaneous fat? I've, I've been led to believe that visceral fat is, is, is the highest risk factor. Absolutely. So um, when you, you know, this is, it's often a, a, a puzzle or, or the, the, what I do is just kind of translate for people what they're hearing about. And well, that means the same thing, you know, like glucose intolerance and insulin resistance and, and all of that is all the same thing. Visceral fat really is, is uh, the same thing as the abdominal circumference. So the, the uh, you know, unless there's some rare problem inside. So your, your belly getting bigger, abdominal circumference really represents internal visceral fat. And in the studies that are done, uh, abdominal circumference elevation, so the, the waist, waist circumference. So you see, I'm using all the same synonyms, the same words. So if you have a big waistline, that correlates and is part of the metabolic syndrome, which is the root cause of heart disease and strokes and heart attacks. So, so visceral fat is really what's inside when someone says you have an, you have an increased waist circumference. And the studies are pretty clear that, that increased waist circumference, meaning increased visceral fat are linked to, and maybe even causal, for atherosclerosis, which is the root cause of heart disease and stroke. Uh, so that's why visceral fat is so important and something that we want as physicians to fix, to help people fix. So, so losing weight, losing fat weight internally is not just cosmetic. Uh, it actually it reduces your heart and stroke risk if you address that visceral fat. Now, we spoke about visceral fat, um, but we didn't we didn't uh, identify um, 100 what is subcutaneous fat. So, what is the difference between visceral fat and subcutaneous fat? Well, so subcutaneous fat, uh, subcutaneous means under the skin. So, uh, like submarine, subcutaneous meaning skin, uh, like uh, cuticles, if you will. So, subcutaneous fat. It's a different type of fat, and if, as you see in most people walking around, it doesn't um, doesn't always get larger when you usually see the belly on other people bigger. Um, there's also uh, conditions called lipedema and lymphedema, where the fat accumulation is not in the belly; it's in the legs. It's uh, not just under the skin, but it's uh, actually in the tissue uh, around the muscles and, and outside the muscle. So the subcutaneous fat, lymphedema, lipedema, don't give the same risk. They don't, um, they're not associated with the same risk as visceral fat. So this is one reason why, you know, in most cases in my office, the BMI, the body mass index, which is the weight 
and the height as a, a ratio, um, the BMI, you know, isn't always perfect. You know, it works pretty well in my office, but you want to, don't want to just um, assume somebody has visceral fat if their uh, weight is up. Um, and often I, I can just see that by looking at somebody, you know, if the legs have a, legs are large, the belly's small, and, and there's sort of a stovepipe appearance, meaning the, the legs kind of just round, cylindrical, and then it kind of tapers at the foot like this, that's lipedema. That's not visceral fat. That, and, and fortunately, you know, a keto diet is good for that, but most doctors won't recognize lipedema. Uh, they're, they're just kind of in tune to the waist circumference and the visceral fat. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, so there's a big difference between visceral fat and other types of fat metabolically, meaning the correlating and causing all of the things we want to stop, like the heart disease and the stroke, the vascular disease, which is really the, the, um, uh, the uh, disease process that we're trying to fix when we help someone lose weight and fix their metabolism. Now, uh, something that I was always, um, you know, what you're telling me um, is a little bit new to me because I was actually of the opinion that visceral fat was very much uh, related to um, thin on the outside, fat tofi, thin on the outside and fat on the inside. And I thought that um, uh, visceral fat uh, was, was, was a risk factor in these type of people, to be honest with you. Yes, well, well, that's true too. So I, I just didn't mention that. Thanks for bringing that up. The the tofi, you'll hear that thin on the outside, fat on the inside. Um, the and most of the time, these folks have elevated visceral fats. Uh, and you know, it's interesting because I, I remember someone uh, in my clinic who had a um, a liposuction maneuver where the the doctor went in and removed the fat around the viscera, meaning the, the um, uh, fat so that there wasn't space uh, so that when he regained the weight, it was very, very tight. It wasn't, the, the number of cells was reduced. So the, the fat that came back caused a, a tighter sort of um, picture or, or manifestation on the outside. Um, and so the in, internally, you may have fat that doesn't show up on the outside as much. It may be because you're, you're not able to store the fat in that way. Uh, so the uh, TOFI really means that you don't have the outside look of obesity, the, but you still have the internal manifestation of the metabolic problem with the visceral fat being the probable cause of it. I mean, I, you and I you know, know that carbohydrates play a big role in this and that someone who has TOFI or, or has that metabolic problem can fix that by changing the food, you know, and, and not necessarily losing weight. But that, that's a good point to raise that um, you might have a metabolic problem, but look lean, not obese or overweight on the outside. So, you, so to really know, you have to have some blood tests done if you have that metabolic um, problem from, and we think that's from the visceral fat. So that was going to be my next question is how would one know that they have, I mean, is there any other warning signs that they have fat around their organs, um, uh, you know, um, that can, did you can, is there any way of telling from looking at someone? Um, is there any way of measuring this? Is it only a blood test? Well, no. I mean, so blood tests will kind of um, cinch the diagnosis, if you will. It will will make you more certain of what's going on. But all of the other signs of insulin resistance might be present. So you might have skin tags. You might have um, acanthosis nigricans, which is a, a darkening of the skin. It kind of looks uh, like a velvety appearance. Um, you may have uh, irregular periods or polycystic ovary syndrome. These are all insulin resistance manifestations that um, may not have obesity related to them. They, they commonly do, but they don't always. And what is the easiest way to get rid of visceral fat? Is it to go on a keto diet? Is it to restrict the carbohydrates? Well, you know, most people think that exercise will fix everything. And I just have to put that out there because exercise really doesn't lead to weight loss unless you restrict the diet 
at the same time. You know, there's that saying, you can't outrun a bad diet, but bad diet being defined as either high calorie or high carb. There are a lot of ways to fix visceral fat and really the weight loss um, that people are trying to get is fat loss. And in the comparative trials, looking at low carb and diets, keto diets and low fat diets, the low carb diets were as good or better. In fact, the really, when you look at them, the, the score is something like 30 to nothing low carb wins. But I, I'm, I'm always a little, I don't want to oversell things. I mean, or say that other things can't work. So I'm careful to say that there are a lot of ways to do it. But keto and low carb is a great way to do it. It's what I use in my clinic for the last 15 years. It's relatively simple to teach. And the hallmark of a keto diet is that the hunger goes away after a day or two. Most other diets leave you hunger, hungry and, and you want to keep eating when the uh, desire to eat goes down so much that you don't really have to restrict calories that you do it automatically for, for just about everyone. That's what it does. So there are a lot of ways to do it. Yeah, and yeah, technically low, um, low fat lost in all these cl clinical trials anyway, but um, it, it still can help people. But uh, my preference is to use a low carb keto approach because it's easy to teach. Uh, and I don't have a whole lot of staff and, and to help with the teaching. Uh, you know, I give a class with a handout and that's the method that I use. It's pretty effective. Well, we also have, um, also don't forget to mention, we also have the Keto Made Simple Masterclass, which um, takes people from where they are now to where they want to be in terms of um, implementing the program. Um, those, that course, I believe, um, is uh, every six to eight weeks. Uh, we run those courses. The next one is, is coming on on the 26th of April. Um, Eric, I must tell you, you definitely taught me something today. So thank you so much. And if you've taught me something, I can assure you, you've probably taught a lot of other people out there something else today. So thank you very much for that. Um, that uh, thank you for thank you for the digital platform helping me with the masterclass. It's going fantastic. Yes, really. Uh, I can't wait to get started again. Fantastic. And um, for you folks um, out there watching, don't forget, uh, we have a bonus for you. And it's Dr. Westman's free things you need to know to lose fat on keto. Uh, the link will be in the description for you. And if you'd like to learn more about Adapt Your Life Academy and our online courses, one of them being the Keto Made Simple Masterclass coming up, as uh, Dr. Westman just said, you can find us on adaptyourlifeacademy.com. Um, Eric, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time as always. We look forward to catching up with you next week. Uh, until next time, thank you so much, Doc. If you like this video, you're going to love our Adapt Your Life Academy. So click on the link in the description to find out more.